morning. I'm Amanda Duncan and this is Wood County Now. Today is International Women's Day. It's being celebrated around the world and this is also Women's History Month in the month of March and we're celebrating by interviewing female elected officials in Wood County. So women have always been very influential not only in the home but also in science and medical fields in law enforcement and in government. And today, we are celebrating with our second interview with Wood County Judge Lucy Hebron. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks for, for having us. me, Amanda. So um, I'd like to start by um, us talking about you becoming the first female county judge and what that means to break through that barrier in a rural East Texas county. Well, I think it's um, indicative of this whole Northeast Texas area. There were several neighboring counties that also have had female Wood County, uh, female county judges. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe the time was just right for Wood County that uh, a woman in that position go ahead and, and take uh, office as county judge. We've had numerous women uh, as elected officials here in our county historically, both in the clerk's office, the county clerk, the district clerk, our county treasurer, uh, tax assessor collector, um, even our uh, justice of the peace have yeah. also been women. So it was just time for the county judge slot to be filled by a woman, I think. Yes, absolutely. So tell me about your history in Wood County and what it was that inspired you to even run for this office. Well, um, my husband and I were looking to get out of the big city of mm -hmm. Houston many years ago in the early 1990s and it was about time to uh, start a family also. And it just so happened that there was a job opening that came open at Mineola High School and my husband decided to take it. And that's kind of how we ended up here. And then we started our family. I opened up my law practice. I began practicing law. And along with kids comes all the uh, associated activities, the um, you know band boosters, the uh, athletic uh, clubs, all the civic uh, organizations that I joined. I believe I was also the first woman to join the Mineola Kiwanis Club. Really? Um, I served on various boards and foundations, both here in Wood County in the Mineola area, as well as over in the Tyler area. So uh, we have a lot invested here in, in Wood County and found it was a great place for us to stay, mm -hmm. raise our kids, um, practice law, and uh, contribute to the community. So that's kind of how um, our history is is here in Wood County and much like many of your viewers we were just looking for something better a better quality of life and we did find it out here in Wood County um, and what was your next question <laughs> what inspired you to run for this office well uh, I in my law practice I'd been used to uh, helping one family at a time one client at a time one company at a time and I got to the point where I thought that um, it's great to be able to help people on a one-on-one -on -one basis on a small scale, but when this opportunity presented itself and, and I heard there was going to be a, a vacancy in this office, I decided um, maybe go ahead and run for it. Then I might have the ability to have a, a broader impact on my community and contribute something on, on a bigger scale. So that's why I, I decided to, uh, to run for this office. Um, Along the way, you'll find as a woman and, and being in business and as an entrepreneur, I took many workshops, seminars, conferences, and I remember when I was trying to think about my decision and whether this was the right move for me, uh, something came to my mind, and that was when you're thinking of making a decision to sort of go outside your box and outside of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. you should consider all the options, but if none of the options are death, you should go for it. And I thought, well, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained, I'm gonna go for it. And uh, that's how I, I ended up uh, getting the support and the confidence and the trust of the people of Wood County uh, to try and uh, uh, fill this fill this uh, office. Yes, I like that. If none of the options are death, you should just go. For yeah, it. go for it. <laughs> yeah. So um, after getting elected, what became your main objective as the judge in this county, and what have you done to achieve the goals that you established for yourself in this office? So I guess the main objective for me was um, I thought I had something to offer mm -hmm. and on, on a broad scale 
and my whole goal was to help improve the quality of life here in Wood County, mm -hmm. whether that was improving the quality of judicial administration in the courtroom, or maybe bringing a business perspective to this office. Um, I'm always conscious of what other cities and other counties are doing across the country, and I saw this as a, an opportunity to maybe make county government more responsive, more efficient. Um, there's a lot of challenges that we're faced with, not the least of which is the monetary and the budgetary constraints that we're faced with as county government. But uh, lots of uh, communities are going to a more responsive uh, type of uh, community involvement, mm -hmm. uh, citizen involvement, and making things faster, better, and more efficient. Um, and although people have told me, you know, this is county government, you can't run it like a business, my response to that is, well, it should be run like a business. Mm -hmm. And if other counties are doing it, certainly we could do it as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's kind of what my goal is. Um, I would like to see Wood County at, at the top of you know the performing list and, and not in the bottom or the middle. Of course. Um, my mantra is, you know, what I want is simple. I just want excellence. <laughs> and I've, I've always done that for myself. Mm -hmm. I have a high standard for myself. Uh, my, my work colleagues, my children, uh, you know, always strive for excellence. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, for a lot of us that really aren't familiar with county government and how it works, we don't really know what the job duties of a county judge are. Could you explain what your role actually is as a county judge and what your job duties and expectations are? Sure. Uh, the job duties are, are twofold. There's obviously what you think of as a county judge, a judge, the judicial part, and that is in the courtroom, mm -hmm. handling the, um, the criminal dockets, the appeals on the civil matters, appeals from the JP courts, the mental health docket, which is an interesting one, um, the probate docket, probate and guardianships. So that's, uh, you know, that's about half of my job duties is, is doing that, doing it well. And because my background is I'm a licensed attorney, that's kind of the focus that I brought to this court as well. Mm -hmm. um, years ago, it was it was common for county judges to be attorneys, but in recent years, not so much, just because you know most attorneys are not interested in doing county service because mm -hmm. you can make more money out in, in the private sector. But the judicial part is one part. The other part is administrative. So uh, the administrative duties are the county judge presides over the commissioner's court. Um, we've got a five-member body on the commissioner's court, that is the county judge and the four commissioners from each of our four precincts. Um, then I'm also the uh, chief financial officer, so the county judge is responsible for preparing the county's budget with the assistance of the county auditor's office, and I'm very grateful we've got a wonderful county auditor mm -hmm. who's been doing it for many years. That's another function. The other function is to preside over emergency management um, activities uh, when the need arises. And strangely enough, uh, that that duty has come to the forefront in the last year. Yes. So that is another duty. The other duty is to promote and encourage economic development here in the county. And like I tell people, I feel like I'm the chief cheerleader for <laughs> Wood County. Um, something I've done in the past, be the cheerleader for uh, the state of Texas or um, other groups that I've represented over the years. So um, I think that's it. Chief Financial Officer, Presiding Officer of the Commissioner's Court, Emergency Management, promote um, the county, and last but not least, uh, the ceremonial functions. Mm -hmm. You know, I go to different chamber events, I promote the county, I also appear um, in Austin if I'm asked to on behalf of legislation or pending matters if they want a county judge's perspective either for a piece of legislation or against. Um, so ceremonial functions are also a part of that. That is a very extensive job list. There's 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 a lot to do. But, yeah. You know, women can get it done. Yes, we're great right. at multitasking. So speaking of emergency management, yeah. is now a good time to go into the other thing or you want to wait? Yes, we can talk about that now. So how do you feel that you go above that job description? And so we can talk about like the role that you play in emergency management and what you're doing, you know, to get these um, yes. COVID immunizations into our county. That's, that is a, a great question. As you know, um, 
I, I'm here to represent all of Lee County, whether you voted for me or not. My mm -hmm. duty is to all the citizens here in Lee County. And a big part of our citizenry, over 25% of our population is seniors over the age of 65. Um, as you know, the vaccines have been very difficult uh, for seniors to get to. There are waiting mm -hmm. lists after waiting lists. Uh, many of them are not tech savvy. Right. A lot of these require that you go online and pre-register or you call a number. And many of our folks don't have that um, option. So I have sort of made it my mission to reach out on behalf of this group. Um, I've been in touch with Texas Department of Emergency Management. In fact, I have Chief Nim Kidd on uh, speed dial and uh, he gave me his personal cell phone. And so he knows that I don't want to say I've been nagging them, but I have been very vocal about the need to help our citizens here in Wood County. And late last week, I was advised uh, by the Texas Department of Emergency Management that they were going to make available uh, 500 vaccines for a mobile vaccination clinic this week in Mineola. So is that the Johnson & Johnson one, the one shot? This is the one and done. Okay. Yes, it's Johnson & Johnson. Um, once you get this vaccine, nothing else is required. So for many seniors, this is an answer to prayer that, um, that they're going to get their shot sooner rather than later. So how do people um, that are elderly, so this is just 65 and older? 65 and older. Um, however, we are taking, we want to make sure that all these vaccines actually go into arms. Mm -hmm. We do not want to waste any vaccine. We don't want Wood County to go on the list of, as having wasted any vaccine. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do our darnest here in the office of the county judge to reach out to anyone who's in the 16 to 65 category with pre-existing health conditions and also add them to the list. Okay. So that in the event you know, someone over the age of 65 misses or can't make it or is ill, that there'll be a backup arm for that vaccine. So is this just a one day clinic or is this gonna go on through a couple of days? From what I understand, and this is what they tell me and I'm just passing this along, this is a one-time opportunity okay. for Wood County only and it is this Thursday. And what is the date of, of that day? The I believe it's 11th. March the 11th. So March the 11th held in Mineola? at the Mineola Civic Center from 9 to 3 and we're going to put on the county's website today a link okay. under the news and newsworthy section of our homepage. If people will click on that you'll see a link for the senior mobile vaccination clinic and it'll give you a link to go to and sign up on an interest list. Okay. All right. So if there is an elderly person that does not get on that list, can they still show up that day to see if they can get immunized? I would say if you're not on that list, to please call our office here at the Office of the County Judge at 763-2716. Okay. Um, and we could possibly help you with that. And I don't know if your viewers would be interested, but... Um, Going on to the website and signing up, um, do you think that's something that y'all would like to review? This is what the form is going to look like, a vaccine interest form for Wood County. And what everyone should know is that this does not guarantee you a shot, but it puts you on a list. And that's for whether you're 65 or not. We prefer for people to be over 65, but there is a box to check if you are not over 65. Okay. So, um, we just want all of these vaccines to be used. Yes. So what is going to be required is an email address if you have it, your name, a phone number where we can call you or we can email you with your time slot. There will be time slots at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11, 12 throughout the day with the last ones being administered at 3 o'clock. Um, city, state, zip code, address, are you over 65 years of age? So you'll click yes or no, and then we need your full date of birth. Um, and then there's three questions at the very end, and this may be a little confusing for people. It asks you, are you part of the phase 1A vaccine group? And that's the healthcare workers emergency, um, that category. So you're gonna click no on that question. Okay. The second one asks if you're part of phase 1B, which is over 65, 
or the 16 to 65 with the pre-existing condition. So on that question, you'll click yes, and the other one you'll click no. So the only one you're gonna answer yes to is phase 1B. So no, yes, no. No, yes, no. And then you'll hit submit, and then you'll get a confirmation saying you've been added to the list. Someone will contact you with a time slot. And that link is going to be on mywoodcounty.com. Yes, that link should be placed on there right about now. Okay. It'll be on the home page. If you go to the very left side under the category news and newsworthy, yeah. uh, click on that and it'll take you right to that form. Okay, and so that is Thursday, March 11th, 9 to 3. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the county's website is www.mywoodcounty.com. Okay. All right. I'll do a reminder on that again on our, um, our... Perfect. We appreciate you helping us spread the word. Absolutely. So, uh, let's go back. What are your personal goals in this office, and what would you like to see achieved in Wood County? I guess um, my personal goals here for this office would be to um, improve Wood County's quality of life in whatever it is we do here at the Office of the County Judge, whether it's in Commissioner's Court, um, shepherding items through on the agenda that benefit all taxpayers, um, whether it's health related, um, which brings me to another point. Health Wood County is not one of the healthiest counties. We've got an initiative coming about on a Wood County Health Advisory Board where we're going to partner with some other entities to help improve the, the uh, health of Wood County residents. Um, budgetary matters, um, we're going to face some severe challenges. As you know, everything's going up in county government. Mm -hmm. All the expenses are. We're going to try and keep a tight uh, rein on that. So keeping the budget under control is also a priority, and then running the courtroom um, in an efficient and timely and professional manner so that we're at the top of the judicial administration efficiencies of uh, Texas counties. Yes. So those are some personal goals. Um, and what was the second part of your, I'm sorry, Amanda. No, that, no you're doing great, I, that was it. How okay. would you like to see that achieved in Wood County? And yeah, and, and the other thing is, I don't know if y'all are aware of this, but you know, um, Austin is currently in session, mm -hmm. and they meet only once every two years, but uh, they, they have a lot of mandates where they require local governments to do certain things, and they enact these laws without funding those, mm -hmm. um, which means that our taxpayers will have to bear a larger burden of uh, what they're imposing on us. So. Part of my duties also as a county judge and as a member of the Northeast uh, Texas County Judges and Commissioners yeah. Association is to come up with legislation and either um, seek the passage of it or you know, uh, opposing certain pieces of legislation that are not in our county's best interest or that are in our county's best interest. That's something that I don't know has been a focus here in this office, but that's something that I'm trying to go back to and mm -hmm. by joining some of these regional associations and having Wood County a part of that group, I'm hoping to uh, uh, band together with other county judges in our Northeast Texas region so that we can successfully advocate for our citizens. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something above and beyond um, the normal. the normal. Yes, we don't get paid any extra for that. That's something that we we do, and I think it's a, a necessary step that I, I need to take personally. Um, that and there's another interesting initiative. The VG Young Institute for County Government sponsors a um, uh, Commissioner's Court Leadership Academy. I don't know that we've ever had anyone from Wood County join that group. It's open to county commissioners and county judges, but I believe I'm the first Wood County elected official to be a part of that select group. Mm -hmm. um, I was recently notified that um, I've been admitted to that class for this year, and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, taking on that role. It'll be above and beyond on my own time, uh, but it'll improve how things are done here, mm -hmm. my leadership skills, communicating uh, uh, effectively with our Texas legislators to um, 
you know, chief cheerleader and a spouse, all good things for Wake County. So you got a lot going on. Lots of things. Yes. yes. So um, as our final question, tell me about a woman that has personally influenced your life and shaped you into the person you are today. Well, that's a very easy one. You know, most people are gonna say their parents, right? Yeah. Um, obviously my dad, who was Air Force, a career military, instilled in me a, a great love of country, patriotism, and um, selfless service. You know, that goes without saying if you're serving in the military. But um, my dad was an American citizen, but my mom uh, truly shaped me. My mom is Nina Magnus, Nina Schroeder Magnus. And she is not an American citizen, or she wasn't a, an American citizen. She's a naturalized American citizen, which means she was born outside of this country, and she became an American citizen only after uh, years of being here. Um, I, I don't know if you remember her story, but my mom was a native of Riga, Latvia, uh, born on the Baltic Sea uh, during World War II. Um, her father was a German, businessman. Her mother, my grandmother, was a uh, Russian peasant woman. Uh, two totally different cultures, totally different personalities brought together and then ripped apart um, because of war. So my mom was a refugee for the first uh, 18 years of her life, wow. having fled from country to country to country. Um, and at one point, my grandmother uh, had to make a, uh, a terrible choice which as a mother, you and I can relate to this, but you, you usually act as a mother in the best interest of your children. Even Whether when it's like ripping your heart ripping out. Ripping your heart out. She basically had to make the decision to leave the city in Poland. Uh, that was the last train out of the, that section. My grandfather did not want to leave. My mother, my grandmother had four small children and she took it upon herself to leave her husband behind and venture out with four small children with no visible means of support, uh, going to a new city, didn't know anyone, no money. And so they ended up, long story short, in Berlin, Germany, in war ravaged Berlin. And as soon as they got there, they were met with the blockade. And I don't know if you remember that. Some of y'all are, are too young to remember this, but that's basically where uh, they shut down the city of Berlin so that food supplies were not able to reach the city in an attempt to shut it off and kill it. And over a million Germans um, survived off of the American military's 24-7 uh, um, package dropping from the skies. They dropped American care packages um, to feed the people of Berlin. And my mom was one of those people who, who uh, endured that. And my mom is just a very, a uh, strong, uh, tough, silent woman, didn't have a, a lot of education. She'll tell you she barely passed German high school. She went on to become um, a textile designer, but ultimately uh, she ended up meeting my dad and got married. And she'll tell you today that other than her marriage date and the births of her children, her proudest moment was when she became an American citizen in May of 1965, and she loves this country dearly, and that's something that she passed mm -hmm. on to us as kids. So, um, my mom has been my greatest inspiration. She sounds like a remarkable woman. She truly is. Wow. She really is. A that's, lucky woman. Yeah, yes. Well, um, do you have a message for young ladies who uh, think they too would like to be involved in local or state or federal government, or even just you know, after hearing these stories of like what your mom went through, your grandmother, and you know, what you've done to get to where you are now, do you have a message for young ladies? I do, um, and it's funny you should ask that question. Um, you know, all, all of the women in Wood County, uh, women that I've run across, have unique, interesting, tough stories that have really inspired me. And just the other day when I was sitting in court doing a Zoom hearing, uh, I noticed on my docket that there was a particular probate case. And I looked at the attorney's name and I went, oh yeah, I recognize that name. It was a girl who graduated from Mineola High School. Mm -hmm. And when we got on the hearing, at the conclusion of her uh, hearing, and it was for the 
probate of her dad's will. And at the very end, she made a very kind comment to me and she said, um, you know, Judge, I just wanted to thank you for coming to speak at our class at Mineola High School because of what you said um, in your background, I was inspired to go into the field of law and it made me who I am today. So uh, I love the fact that women can be an inspiration to other women. Yeah. So I would encourage women, girls, young ladies out there, uh, get your education, mm -hmm. whether that's in the classroom or work related. And um, like the old army motto, be all you can be, <laughs> right? Go outside your comfort box and you can do it. And hopefully you've got a mentor or two along the way who will take you under their wing and help you out as I've been so lucky in, in my career. Mm -hmm. Maybe you too also. Mm -hmm. But women who just take an interest in you and encourage <coughs> others yeah. and say, yes, you can do it. And finding your tribe of women who lift you Support up and encourage you, you and straighten your crown. Exactly. We need that as women. We really definitely do. Exactly. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. I think that this was a great interview. Um, and, you know, um, this is a hard day, even though we're celebrating Women's History Month and International Women's Day, this is a hard day for a lot of the people and residents in Wood County. Um, recently, a young boy, Coy Gilbreth, um, passed away unexpectedly. And so, you know, we definitely, um, our hearts go out to his family and his friends. Um, you know, that anytime that there's a death, oh, it affects everyone terrible. that's in that circle. And so I know that there are a lot of little kids um, that are grieving also. And so we just want to offer our condolences to that family. Absolutely. It, it is always hard when someone in the county suffers a mm -hmm. loss. And, um, that is a, a huge loss, but uh, all of Wood County, that's the great thing about our county. Uh, we band together. I think we're all very supportive when we see someone in need. Um, I love that about Americans and Texans. They, they reach out and try and find a way to help. So our, our hearts and prayers go out to that family. Absolutely. All right. So, um, Please join us again next Monday, the 15th. We're going to continue celebrating Women in History with an interview with Wood County Clerk Kelly Price. And also, as a reminder, um, go to www.mywoodcounty.com. There is a link for you to sign up to get the Johnson & Johnson one and done dose, um, the COVID vaccine dose. Um, it will be available at Mineola Civic Center on Thursday, March 11th from 9 a.m. to 3. At the end of the questionnaire, there are three questions. Make sure you answer no to the first one, yes to the second one, and no to the third one. And if you have any questions, you're welcome to call this office at 903-763-2716. And thank you all for tuning in today. I think we learned a lot, and it was a wonderful interview. See you next week. Thank you, Amanda. Great.